tree stuff hasn't appeared yet. Or has it? I could have sworn that was one of the patch notes. In this patch, wasn't it supposed to be that you could scroll and zoom in the focus trees? Or was that for La Resistance? I could have sworn that was added in this. Am I going back to Kaiserreich later on? Probably not today. And Sindrin, what would you call an alligator wearing a vest? An investigator. <laughs> okay, that was pretty funny. Well done. So, again, uh, looking at Italy's focus trees, we can see that we have kind of over here are all their industrial things, so industrial effort, which will give free civilian factories and building slots to house those civilian factories, give us the extra research slot, which will allow us to do just more research over time, and then also, for example, oil supplies in Benghazi and synthetic refineries, because the axis do tend to run pretty low on fuel supplies. We have the Army Primacy, which is all of their bonuses to ground forces. We have Mara Nostrum, which is their naval upgrades. And we can see between Mara Nostrum and light ship effort that the Italians actually have quite a large naval tree, probably hinting that they are one of the primary naval powers in the Axis. And then we have the Triumph in Africa. This has to do with our attack on Ethiopia and then eventually... Uh, our relations with Yugoslavia, whether we want to go after them or if we want to befriend them, Albania, Bulgaria, and then also our relations with Germany. If we do Italy first, then we're kind of going on our own. Uh, we can do the Pact of Steel, which is the historical one where they go with Germany, or we can befriend Romania and start our own faction effectively. Uh, is that true? No, that just makes Romania more likely to join the fascists in whichever stance they short show and then we can also support nationalist spain in the spanish civil war but this is all closed off we cannot do this until we own ethiopia so until the ethiopian war is over that's closed to us so we're going to do ethiopian war logistics this gives us more infrastructure and naval bases in eritrea and also in somaliland which is going to have more supplies flowing into both of those areas this will lead to more industries more industries possibly more fortifications, extra research. It's just a good idea to go down here. The other thing which we want to take a look at before we go too far into building infrastructure and stuff is very often you will have a focus that adds infrastructure like this. So every single province gains one infrastructure in Italy, basically from the Italian highways. So right now we want to go to a maximum of level 9, not level 10, because we'll get those for free. If you've already built up to 10, then that's basically just wasted part of that uh, focus. It doesn't change it. So, we're going to do Ethiopian War Logistics. We might have misjudged the logistical situation for our glorious conquest of Ethiopia. We must make it our primary goal to provide our brave troops with the necessary supplies. Okay, let's begin that. Then let's go and alter Tuscany's plan. So, we're going to reduce the amount of infrastructure we're building to one. We're going to build one more in Latium. We're going to build two more in Amalia Romana, Romania and then to in Piedmont. That should get us going for a while. And we can see here 11 out of 15. So the currency that you use to actually build stuff are civilian factories, these guys. Every country will begin with a share of them. You will need to spend a certain number of your civilian factories on consumer goods, depending on your mobilization level. So actually, we as Italy have 20 civilian factories, but we are losing nine of them automatically to producing consumer goods. This is basically the civilian consumers uh, just using a part of it. It's building toasters, making clothing, all the stuff that is not militarily uh, relevant to us. And then any surplus can actually be used by the state to build stuff, extra stuff. And that's what we're doing with Tuscany. So we're using up nine of our 20, means that we have 11 free. Those 11 are being lumped in to build infrastructure in Tuscany. Once that's done, they'll move on to Latium, Emilia Romagna, and then Piedmont. Um, every slot can have a maximum of 15. So even if we had two uh, infrastructure queued up for Tuscany, it would build the first one with the 11, and then it would build the second one with 11. And then everything behind it would get no benefit. So that's why I'm kind of doing the bigger places first to make sure that the big places are built up earlier so then if we do get the opportunity to start actually building factories we're in a position to build those factories into the highly developed locations building those factories very quickly 
possibly including, for example, additional civilian factories. All right, next up, let's go and take a look at our research. So Italy starts off with four different researches, uh, research slots. If we click on one of those slots, then we get the research tree, which is this. At the top of it, you have different tabs for the different types of technology. So here we have infantry, so this is improving their guns, their equipment, which increases their attack and defense, uh, motorized and mechanized units, mechanized amphibious units, special forces like marines, mountaineers, paratroopers. We have a fair number of mountaineers, so we may well want to look at that. And then, whoops, just like generic special forces upgrades. If there's an arrow, split arrow like this, then it's an either or. So if you go along this route, then we are locked out of this route. So this is a, basically a choice between having better special forces or more special forces. So numbers versus quality, effectively. And that really depends on the quality of your... or the size of your military, frankly. The other... So the 11 to 15 doesn't mean it has 11 out of 15 levels, it uses 11 out of the 15 Civ factories. Correct, Dodgy, yes. Um, the other thing you should be aware of is the dates. So at the moment we're on the 1st of January 1936, which means anything up to 1936 will be done at normal speed. So we can hover over Support Weapons 1, which is a 1918 technology. It'll take 126 days. Anything in green, we've already got. So we've already got Tier 1 and Tier 2 guns, and also motorized. But we could hover down here to Marines and see that that would take 168 days. However, if we hover over one of the 1938 technologies, we can see that it says technology is two years ahead of time. The more ahead it is, the bigger the time penalty. This will take us 455 days. That's more than a year. It's like a year and a half to get one technology. That is extremely wasteful. Don't do that. Uh, there is one way of mitigating it, however. Oops, focus trees. So, Germany is probably a better example of this. Some countries will have focuses which give you a tech bonus for example down here we can see army innovations 2 for germany two times 100 percent research bonus for land doctrine that means you research a land doctrine twice as quickly twice so you get two land doctrine tech levels basically and then one 100 percent research bonus for panzer three four five and eleven panthers um this is how you can overcome ahead of time penalties. So even if you are researching a 1938 technology in 1937 with a 100% bonus, it might be worth doing, uh, particularly if you're Germany and you want to have more advanced tanks than your opponent. So that could be really effective there, but we're not going to be worrying about any of that right now. So we are just going to be sticking to the 1936 technologies. There is a standard set of opening technologies you basically always want to get. The first one is here in engineering. Electronic engineering has to do with anything electronics. And this tree over here in particular, the center line, is simply research speed. So the 1936 tech, electronic mechanical engineering, 3% research speed, we want to have that. So we're gonna click on it and then hit research. So that's now that slot filled. Once that is done, we'll progress to mechanical compu computing. Uh, which gives you another 4%, and then we'll maybe see if we can have a ahead of time to get a computing machine, which gives us another 5%. And that should set our research off really, really nicely. Next up, we have industry. Absolutely, we want the 1936 construction, because it just makes us build everything 10% faster. Fantastic. Then we probably also want basic machine tools, because it unlocks the industry techs. These ones here are very important because they can increase the number of industries you have in a single province. Whereas this line increases how efficient those single factories actually are. So we're going to start this. Basic machine tools. Research. Now the fourth slot. Only really major powers will have four slots. Most countries will only have three. So it becomes less of a question for them. But what are we going to use the fourth slot for? We could upgrade our weapons and equipment. We are at war already. That might not be a bad idea. We could start getting some support companies. Uh, these are units that you can attach to your divisions to give them additional bonuses in various areas. One very important one is the field hospital. Because it will um, mean that you lose less manpower in combat. And manpower, which is this number up here basically determines how long you can stay in the war. If you're out of manpower, you're screwed. So field hospitals might well be a worthwhile choice, but Italy has a pretty high population. We don't necessarily need to worry about that too much. We could also upgrade tanks. This is a 1936 model of light tank, possibly. 
but I think the one we want to take a look at is the Doctrine. These choose the overall strategy that your country will be following, and these have a huge impact on how you build your armies, so what your divisional templates are. It'll determine how your armies actually fight in the field, so Grand Battle Plan, for example, will try to build up the max planning as I was talking about earlier, whereas Mobile Warfare will just build up that max plan very quickly, but the cap is not going to be as high. So there is a big difference between those two. Mass Assault will tend to use large numbers of manpower and very big armies, so that's very much classic Soviet Union. And then Superior Firepower is very industrially intensive, and you basically have lots and lots of artillery to do lots and lots of damage. But those armies do tend to be more expensive than, say, Grand Battle Plan or Mass Assault. Mobile Warfare is probably the most expensive because this is a heavy reliance on tanks and on motorized or mechanized units. So this is speed, damage, uh, planning and bonuses, and then just numbers. I do have a couple of videos on this on my YouTube channel, which you can find at youtube.com slash mordredviking, where I talk more in depth about the actual differences between the four different doctrines which you can choose and when you should choose them. I would encourage you to go and check that video out. It's just search Mordred Viking tutorial uh, doctrines and it should come up. Uh, however, we also want to take that in relation to our focuses because sometimes you have focuses which will give you bonuses to certain unit types. So for example here, Army Primacy, we have a research bonus for Land Doctrine. That could be research bonus to Grand Battle Plan or research bonus to Superior Firepower, which can help determine which direction you're going because you'll get those doctrines more quickly. We also have bonuses to Artillery, which would rather suggest that maybe we want to have better artillery in our armies because it's kind of hinting you're going to have good artillery. We also have Armored Effort down here, which is better tanks, but that's fairly late. Like, we're not going to get to this for quite a long time. Uh, likewise with Special Forces. Ah, and here's another type of modifier. Special Forces, times one, two years ahead of time penalty reduction for Mountain Infantry, two. So this means that we could get 1948 Mountain Infantry and 1930, sorry, 1938 Mountain Infantry and 1936 if we had this focus. It would count as the same level. So that's another way of mitigating ahead of times. And this really suggests that we're going to have excellent Mountaineers. But that doesn't really change our Doctrine choice at all. The other thing you want to take a look at when deciding your Doctrine, this is more for Kaiserreich and probably less for Vanilla, is your uh, designers. So we can see here for the tank designer we have Fiat. This is armor reliability plus 5%, armor research speed plus 15%. That's generic, doesn't really affect anything. Uh, some mods will make it so that it will say like light tank reliability plus 5%, heavy tank reliability plus 15%, whatever. And that can help you kind of gauge where your nation's strengths and weaknesses lie. Uh, another one here is the aircraft designer. So we have Machi, which is a light designer, so agility max speed. Naval designer, which is naval bombers and carriers and fighters. Uh, medium aircraft, which is heavy fighter and tactical fighter. Uh, bomber reliability. It doesn't actually increase their damage or anything, just makes them more reliable, which you can then basically spend to give them other abilities and traits and stuff like that. Um, but this being vanilla, these are extremely generic and it doesn't really matter. So I would say for us, I'm planning to use most of my oil on ships and aircraft. Probably mostly ships. Mobile warfare is an extremely oil intensive choice. So that basically negates that because we're not going to be able to trade with America, we'll be at war with them, and America is the majority of the oil in the game. We will, however, be active in Africa, and Africa does have some, especially if we can break through Egypt into the Middle East. So we might have a little bit, but again, I'd rather spend that on fleets, because fleets are kind of expensive too. Um, we don't have an amazing industry, though we could certainly try to go superior firepower. I don't think we really have the industry or manpower base to do mass assault. So this is really between superior firepower grand battle plan. We already start with one level in grand battle plan, so this is kind of the game going, you should probably think about going this way. I honestly think that grand battle plan is not very strong at the moment. They nerfed it pretty heavily in the past and it's never recovered. So I think we're actually going to switch over to superior firepower. We're going to research that instead. And because we are not fighting against Germany 
um, who are very resistant. Tanks are very resistant to artillery. We're going to be fighting against France, who's probably going to be very manpower heavy. We're going to be fighting against Britain, who's going to have a lot of infantry and marines, and potentially even the Soviets, who are also going to have a lot of infantry. Um, so superior firepower just for the extra artillery oomph uh, will be really good. Can you switch between those strategies once you started researching it? You can, but you lose all progress. So if we've made it down to here and thought, you know what, our enemy's actually going to be uh, doing a different thing, then maybe we want to switch. I really would not do so because it takes so long to get each, either the, each of these done. So researching this takes 189 days. Researching this one would take 378. Another 378. It's like a year for every level. Like, you want to be careful about that. The other thing which you will notice is time to research 95 days for 100 stars. These stars up here are your experience in army experience, naval experience, and air experience. You can spend experience on research upgrades, speed, speed upgrades in doctrines. So army doctrines will use army experience, naval doctrines will use naval experience, and air doctrines will use air experience. Uh, you can also use experience to change your templates to modify your actual units in terms of aircraft, tanks, or ships. Uh, th th there's a number of different things you can spend experience on. You generate it by training. So one of the main reasons to continue training troops, even if they are already uh, regulars, is they still generate experience. And it's also going to be very important for things like creating new ship types. So each of these modules that you assign to a ship will cost you experience to save that template. Uh, the other thing we should probably take a look at are our divisions. So if we click on the recruit and deploy, it pops out this templates tab. Is this eventually going to end up on YouTube like the naval tutorial? Yes, it is. Um, so we've got the Division de Fanteria, Division Alpina, Division Colonial, Division Celere, and Regiamento di Cavalleria, uh, being infantry, mountains, colonial infantry, so this is just going to be a, like a low strength infantry unit, tanks, and then cavalry. And if we hit edit, we can see exactly what it's comprised of. Now, there is a golden rule when it comes to creating army templates, and it's this, combat width. You want to make sure that if this is a multiple of 10, so either 10, 20, or 40. You don't want to have 30, you don't want to have 60, you don't want to have 90, you want to have 10, 20, or 40, always. You can sometimes go like one or two over or under, that doesn't matter so much, but as far as possible, make it a multiple of 20. Huzzah! Whoa, Mastro, thank you very much for the gifted subs. Very much appreciated that. Thank you. Huzzah. Okay, Boomer, Sir Squire, Dead ID, Soviet Puma, and Nerd Nick. Congratulations on the gifted subs, courtesy of Mastro. Thank you. I always love it when people do gifted subs. Huzzah. So you're awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. And to the five of you, welcome to the Maudlings. All right, so um, at the moment we have six different huzzah. Uh, what are these brigades? I think these are brigades. No, battalions. We have six different battalions of infantry, and we have one support company of engineers. So the engineers will increase the huzzah defensiveness of our units. So they increase defense. They increase uh, entrenchment. Those are the two main things that engineers do. So they're going to be a lot better at defending generally. We can add other battalions just by clicking on the pluses. Bearing in mind that each battalion... Oh, what are these called? That's a new battalion. That's... A line of battalions is comprised of some things. You can see that there is a line here. Each line can only be of one type of unit. So, for example, these have to be infantry units, which is why we're limited to anti-tank artillery, infantry, or mountaineers. These are all categorized as infantry. Whereas, if we go over here, it's much more expensive, but we can have armoured, and we can have mobile, as well as infantry. Are these brigades? They might be brigades. The columns are brigades. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't matter that much, just something to bear in mind. Um, so, if you add a new brigade, it's going to cost you 25 experience. If you add just a new column, it's going to be just 5. So, 
we're probably going to want to add more infantry and more artillery. Especially if we're going to superior firepower, we're going to want a lot of artillery in our units. So at the moment we have a 12 combat width infantry. It's not great, but it's also not terrible. Our mountaineers are also 12 and they actually start with support artillery, which is excellent. These guys are going to do a lot more damage. The colonial troops are also combat with 12, but they don't have any engineers. Okay, these units are actually surprisingly big. Interesting. Then we have our tank units. They're actually cavalry plus motorized plus tanks. And unfortunately, units move the speed of their slowest units. The cavalry is slowing this down to 6.4 kilometers per hour. Whereas light tanks and motorized, I think, will go at 12 kilometers per hour. So these cavalry are really slowing us down. They're not as bad as, say, the Japanese templates, which actually start with infantry in their tank divisions. And then we have the cavalry divisions, which are just pure cavalry. Okay. Um, cavalry are basically cheap motorized. They are a fair bit quicker than infantry, but they're also a little bit more expensive. Uh, another little trick that you can do is you can have lots of cavalry units, and it will train your commanders to use motorized and mechanized better. They're in the same category. Who are our allies right now? Don't have any. Alright, next up, military factories. So part of the reason I was checking out the division templates is so I know what equipment I need to produce for them. So at the moment we're making guns and we've got four military factories assigned to making guns. We have one military factory assigned to support equipment, one to light tanks, one to uh, two to motorize and one to air support. Huzzah! Okay, Boomer, thank you very much for the gifted subs. Very much appreciate that, thank you. Exgentis, Orbital Doug, Globy Bulgar, Claytus and PS359. Huzzah! Welcome to the Maudlings. Thank you very, very much for that. I'm going to take this opportunity to wet my whistle a little. Huzzah! Huzzah! Alright, so we know that we have a lot of infantry. Huzzah! Infantry only uses support uh, infantry equipment. The engineers use support equipment. The tanks obviously use tanks. Uh, cavalry also use infantry equipment. We're not actually producing any artillery. Huzzah! Which is an oversight. So we are going to start slotting in some artillery. Very easy way of doing that. You just click on the different categories. So we're going to say build infantry or artillery equipment. And we're just going to select artillery. And now we can click on and hold the name and pull them up in the list. The further up in the list they are, the more priority they will have in terms of factories and resources. So for example, if we had a little bit of rubber, then the motorized would get that rubber first, and then the close air support wouldn't get any. So mixing those around, if I did it that way around, then the close air support would get first dibs on that equipment. So I'm going to say that artillery is pretty important, so we're going to set them as second place, and we're actually going to make it three different factories producing artillery. I would also like a bit more motorized and maybe another tank so we can actually get a little bit more push going on. We probably also want to have fighters so we're going to open up the aircraft tab and see what fighters we have access to. Now we only have interwar fighters. Those are really poor um, but I think we'll just need to build a couple so we can get a couple of air wings in the air. So I'm going to build two sets of both of those. I think I'm actually going to go three close air support. Now we've still got one factory left, you can see here, 18 out of 19. 18 of them have currently been assigned, we have one left. Um, so, oh, actually we do not have a lot of rubber. You know what, we're not going to build too many tanks or motorized. Because, you know what, yes we are. We're going to go to precisely 8. Because if you import resources, it's always in units of 8. So, spending one factory, we're going to get 8 sets of... Uh, rubber. We'll deal with that in just a moment. Then, let's see, what else do we need? I think we're going to put one more on just infantry equipment, just so we can have lots and lots of infantry in the field. So now all of those are assigned. Now, as I was talking about, we do have a couple of uh, resource shortages. So if we head over to the trade tab, we can see that there are different icons for the different trade goods that you can buy. We are short on rubber, as we can see up here. And we're going to take a look at who sells rubber. So, Dutch East Indies has 275 available. Malaya has 248. Britain has 44. France has 38, etc. I'm going to buy from British Malaya because apparently we have a land connection to Malaya. Because we are friendly with all of the nations between us 
and Malaya. We're not at war with any of those. Once we go to war with Britain, getting rubber supplies is going to be a lot more difficult, but right now we're not. So we're going to click on them, and then we're going to select one. The way that I can see is that we have a land connection is there's nothing in convoys. This is not going to cost us any convoys to import this. Now, all trade is paid for by civilian factories. So we're basically saying to Malaya, I will give you one civilian factory, and you're going to give me eight rubber. We're going to send that, and now we're getting eight rubber, which is going to, as soon as we unpause, knock out that deficit, meaning that we start producing our equipment at uh, full speed. We do have a bit of chromium shortage, but I'm not going to worry about that too much, because that's going to be mostly ships, which we will talk about in a moment. Can you stockpile resources like rubber? No. The only thing in the game that you can stockpile at the moment is fuel, which is uh, denoted up here. So we may well want to try and build up one our fuel stockpile so we can actually stockpile more fuel and then also just increase the amount of resources in our stockpile. Um, but that is going to be something we'll worry about a little bit later. We are still very early in the game here. Have I talked about synthetics? No, not yet. <laughs> That's more advanced. Um, lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, in fact we can see we only have 10 factories working on Tuscany now instead of the 11 that we had earlier. Uh, do, 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 do. Navies are moving, armies are moving, armies are assigned, air forces. So if we click on the air, we can see all of the different air wings that we have. These will be kind of random when you start the game. Eventually, they'll probably become more uniform as you actually start to tweak them. But I'm going to send this close air support and just click on him. And he's already actually here in Eritrea. So he's currently in this airbase, you can see, because it's gold. There are 120 planes out of the 600 capacity, so we could send more aircraft over there if we wanted. I'm not expecting Ethiopia to have a huge air force, so I'm just going to select all of my tactical bombers. I'm just going to put them in the same place. So we're just selecting them all and then right-clicking, and we can see that they all have lines heading over there. These big circles is their range, so they can hit Arabia, Egypt, uh, East Africa and a tiny bit of Central Africa. The more of an air zone they cover, the more efficient they are. So they're going to be moderately efficient in Arabia and pretty poor in Central Africa, for example, even though they are probably physically closer to Central Africa. So if other countries trade for some of my resources, that frees up your demand for civilian factories. It does. So if Britain wanted to buy some of my aluminium, for example, Italy has a fair amount of aluminium, then I would get civilian factories from them. Uh, there are different ways of weighting how likely a country is to trade with you. That's called trade opinion. Um, that's generally done through focuses. There isn't really that kind of diplomacy in the game. And also faction members are just more likely to buy from you. So once we join the Pact of Steel and make an alliance with Germany, then Germany is more likely to buy resources from us, as we probably should buy from them, because I'm basically just transferring my factories to Germany, helping them build up their economy. So always try to trade with your friends if you're able to.